I love woodwork. I love doing woodwork. And when I needed a tool, I bought it. This place is full of passion. Oh yeah, absolutely. So Leute, ich begrüße euch heute mal aus der größten Werkstatt der Welt, zumindest die größte Werkstatt der Welt, die ich je gesehen habe und vor allem die abgefahrenste Werkstatt. Ich bin nämlich äh, bei Doug in Texas und äh, Doug habt ihr schon mal gesehen, weil ich habe nämlich ein Video reacted, äh, als Doug quasi eine Workshop-Tour gemacht hat von seiner Werkstatt. Ist nicht normal, es ist nicht normal. Und viele von euch haben sich gewünscht, dass ich äh, mal den Doug besuche. Und jetzt habe ich mir spontan gesagt, ich fliege einfach mal nach Houston und mache mit dem Duck ein kleines Video, dass ich mir mal die Werkstatt hier mal persönlich angucken kann. Hey Duck. Hey, my friend. Say hello to the German viewers. Welcome to Texas and hello, ah. my friends. Good to see you again. Also Duck ist äh, ein total cooler Typ. Wir haben uns ja eben schon mal so ein bisschen unterhalten. And you showed me the, the office yes. uh, already, which is kind of unique. And it's a, like a museum for itself. I mean, you can spend hours just in the office section of your building. <laughs> so what are you doing that you have such a big workshop? What's your, what's your, what do you do for a living? I, uh, what I do for a living is I'm a commercial contractor. Have been all my life. I started out uh, as the kid that could build things. And in high school, I would uh, take jobs doing woodworking in houses. And I started doing new homes to track in the woodwork and stuff that goes on in them. And that led to doing strip center work, which uh, we, what we call a strip center is uh, like a one story building where you'd find a subway and a donut shop and a barber, just little different businesses. That's like these strip malls. That like strip mall, strip yeah. center, strip mall. Yeah, type thing. That was the first time in my life I had ever seen a metal stud. When was that? And, oh What God. Early 90s. Early 90s. 90, 91, maybe 89. So you, you just said that you worked like uh, you had your first business when you were just 16 and still in high school? Yep. And uh, I called it Fleetwood's Trim back then. I named it after that. I had a Cadillac, an, an old uh, 64 ah. Fleetwood Cadillac that I, my truck broke down, so I took the back seats out of the Cadillac to use it to carry the tools around. And that was, a, that was a Cadillac Fleetwood? Like that was the, a Fleetwood, the, the, Fleet, Fleetwood four-door Cadillac, yeah. That was a 7.4 liters or what? No, I, the engine, I don't remember, buddy. I don't remember. I remember the, 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 the back leather seats. I had one seat facing the other seat, the, the limo-type model. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I took the seats out so I could carry tools from job to job because I had to keep working. I have to say, I was totally blown away when I first saw your shop because what came to my attention was all the focus to details. And uh, as we have a saying in our videos, we say haben ist besser als brauchen, which means that it's better to have than to need. To need, yes. And I think you're the type of guy for this because oh, like, yes. I, I see like three of a kind. Yeah. Like some yeah. drills, three of a kind, yeah. like darts? Yeah. What are these for? I play darts. Okay. Just my extra darts. There's a dart board in that room in the office. You just didn't see it. But in construction, I've probably done everything from masonry to plumbing to roofing to parking lot work to trenches. And when I needed a tool, I bought it. And there are a lot of tools in here that I don't use that much anymore. I'm getting old now. I've slowed down a little bit. I sub out most of my work mm -hmm. that gets done. Mm -hmm. But I ain't never thrown a tool away. So, <laughs> okay. I've, uh, I've so subbed out means that you're, you're having own contractors that do yes, special works for you. Exactly. The guys okay. that build the walls and paint the offices and lay in the floors, they, they sub the work from me. I give them the job, they do it for me, I sell it to the customer. How many uh, employees do you have? Uh, employees, not many, just a couple. Subs, hundreds. Really? Yeah. So you're more like the managing the guy. Man can, can, by being, that's what the rare phrase general contractor means. Mm -hmm. If you wanted a house built, you could either hire the dirt man, hire the concrete man, hire the framer, hire the roofer, hire the plumber, hire the electrician, or you can hire one guy that does it all for, for you. And he hires all those people. And you're hiring him for his expertise 
and for him to supervise it and get it done for you in a timely fashion and make sure it gets done right, carries the insurance that you want to have because you can't expect some little painter who does painting to carry $2 million worth of insurance to protect you while he's working on your property. Mm -hmm. And that's where a general contractor comes in. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. Would you call yourself like a carpenter? That's what I started out as, yeah. A building cabinets like the ones you saw in the office, yeah. in people's houses, and, ha and hanging doors and running trim and window sills and more crown mold than I can shake a stick at. I love woodwork. I love doing woodwork. I enjoyed doing woodwork. It was more fun when I was the guy standing there behind the miter box with the nail gun and putting the base on and hanging the doors. Nowadays it's phone calls, emails, headaches, deadlines, deadlines, deadlines. Get it done, get it done, get it done. That's what the business is, the construction business. This isn't the construction business. This is my shop, my hobby. A lot of the tools that are in here, the big ladders and stuff, they still do get used on a job. The guys will come get them and take them for their job. All the tools in this little room right here, they all sit in cases because they all go get taken to a job. Okay, this, if, this if, looks pretty good organized. Sort so of. So you have like an inventory? No, uh, not, I know everything that's there. I know uh, there's a board out here where they sign it if, yeah. they, if they're taking it out and then bring it back. And that's all these tools are used for, with the exception of those Milwaukee chargers. I know these. These crowbar or uh, demolition de 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 tools. Demo short for demolition. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of multi-tool. That's a, that's a multi-tool, yeah. yeah. Haben wir euch schon mal gezeigt, and, smarte and, Werkzeuge. <laughs> and look, guys, it does get used. Yeah. Okay. <lacht> ja, because, das, war, das war übrigens eine Sache, die viele Zuschauer äh, unter dem Video geschrieben haben, nach dem Motto, der Herr Duck, der arbeitet doch gar nicht mehr. Das ist nur noch ein Hobby äh, für ihn, weil die Werkzeuge sind alle unbenutzt. Aber, actually, it's not. Does one of those picks look like they don't get used to you? I think I do have one new axe up there. But this looks like a shop. No, no. <lacht> these, are, these are still uh, unused. They are newly packed. I've been using cordless tools since they first came out in the early 80s. And the biggest problem you have with cordless tools, the batteries die and the manufacturers improve them and they upgrade them and they change them and they change them. And you've got a perfectly good working drill, but you can't use it anymore because you can't buy any more batteries. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I changed over to Milwaukee, I said, that's not happening. Yes, their 18 line is great. It's brand new. Two years from now, it will not be. I'm going to make sure I have some extra batteries. You don't think that you can get batteries, new batteries for the M18 in two years? I don't know. I can't predict the future. I've seen it happen so much the, with DeWalt. Mm -hmm. these, this, this tool manufacturer behind you, the yeah, one that makes yeah, this yeah. miter box, DeWalt, they change their batteries constantly. Porta Cable changes their batteries constantly. I, ha I had the biggest heavy duty line of Porta Cable cordless tools and I had to wind up throwing them all in the dumpster. Because num bad. number one, you couldn't rebuild the lithium batteries. There are battery shops that will rebuild the batteries for you, but they couldn't rebuild the porta cables. You couldn't buy them anymore. I found myself going to pawn shops trying to find old batteries. I don't think that Milwaukee will change that fast as like Bosch. The 18 volt Bosch system is uh, since 2008 and they still comfortable. I've, I've got a few Bosch tools. I love their hammer drills and a large one up above you. They make the best hammer drills in the world. They are actually built um, in Germany. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they make great tools. Yeah. I, I don't have any of their cordless tools. I have in the past. I've been very happy with them. But I got an amazing deal from a friend on Milwaukee. So I bought everything. Every tool you buy comes with a charger. I didn't buy the chargers. Just if you're using the drills out there in the shop, you don't need two chargers. Have you seen their rapid charger? Yeah, yeah. It'll charge a dead battery in two minutes. Also, I think this yeah. is neat. Yeah, that because is. Because you can just... That's a job site put, charger, yeah. Put six batteries in. But if you just leave them in the, on the shelf, like after 10 years, they are dead. Really? Yeah. Well, they won't be there for 10 years, but they're... So what you can do is like charge them from time to time to a level of about 40%. Yeah. So that keeps them healthy. Okay. So uh, don't, don't, don't let leave them, them in their pack. Don't yeah. leave them in their pack like yeah. for five, six years. Okay. I like this uh, DeWalt uh, table saw. Because that, that one is actually fairly new. 
And a friend of mine lost all his tools in his fire. Oh. So I came in here and I gave him a table saw. I gave him a compressor. There were two of these 12 inch slide boxes sitting right here. I gave him a slide box and I gave him an eight inch miter from down there mm -hmm. and probably a dozen hand tools. And the minute I did that, Berto needed to take a table saw to the job. So I went and bought that. <laughs> so what's your system of like with all the parts here? Yeah, the, the reason that came about was uh, when the guys would come to get something for a job or a tool and they would get there and find they needed one six millimeter nut. If you go to the store and we have Home Depot and Lowe's type thing, you can't buy just one 16 millimeter nuts. You have to buy a five pack or a box or something like that. So you need one, you buy a five pack or a box, you use it. It wound up in the back of the vehicle, scattered everywhere, it gets lost, never gets used. When being an organization freak and you're born that way, you don't develop it, you just born, yeah. it's a curse, <laughs> it's a curse. <laughs> But I would decide to clean the trucks. Well, all these nuts and bolts were just laying everywhere. And I was like, this is just money, just yeah, money. Yeah, of course. So I said, I'm gonna solve that. I'm gonna get one of everything we need. So I bought those plastic racks with these little shelves in them. And I screwed them up all along the wall here, right where you could reach them. And it wasn't a week those plastic bends started breaking. Not, not the bends, not these things. Yeah. They are the rock of Gibraltar. Yeah. You know, they, they're, they're great. They never break. It's the container the manufacturer gives you to set them in. The racks, from the weight of the tool, the, the objects that I was putting in them, they would just fall off the wall and break. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I can't have that. Well, I'll just build my own. And then if I'm going to build something, it's going to be trimmed. So this, this was the first row. That was the second row. And then that was the third row. But it's so, going around. It's, it's so the, I, it's so well built. I number I numbered it. That it's, it starts from one to a thousand something. I forget what, because I fi I figured when I was doing it, I said, man, I'm gonna have to categorize this. I'll never remember where everything's at. I have never went to the catalog once. If you want to be efficient, there's no way around to do it like this. Yeah. Because at least maybe you are the only one who has the structure in his head. Yeah. But if you have an employee coming in here. They don't. They don't. They, don't. Yeah. they are lost without. Yeah, yeah but there, there's, there's a catalog. They all have, the, they tell you what's in every drawer. But I don't, if you want to use a six millimeter nut, it's in drawer 714 or right in that area. You know? And if I'm, if let's say I forget that this is a three inch 1024, it's written on the back, you know. 1024 is a standard thread. Uh, like uh, right here behind you. Zoll, Zöllig. Say it again. Zoll, that's inch, that's Zöllig, yeah. Zöllig. Uh, it's Z-O-L-L, -L. Zoll. Yeah. Zoll. Zoll. Zoll, okay, yeah. Well, uh, we, we call it standard and metric. Uh -huh. And uh, there's, uh, this, this is a checking board. So if you've got a nut or a bolt or you don't know what it is, that's the whole purpose of this thing. So I can check and make sure this nut that I'm gonna put away is really 12. Are you actually yeah. working with metric from yeah. time to time? Yeah, oh God, yeah. I was thinking that well, Americans take, use inch. No, we use inch and metric. And most of the tools and equipment and stuff you buy, just probably the same in Germany, it's all made overseas. Yeah. And they use metric. Yeah. If you're gonna work on your lawn lawnmower, or your weed eater, or I'm gonna put that winch up here, it's gonna have metric nuts in it. Are these Viha? Yeah, these are German. Yes, made they are. in Germany. They are pretty nice. They are. Yeah. They are wonderful little tools. And I uh, remember that. That yes, is your sir. charging yes, station. Sir. There you go. And it's uh, that's that switch over there on the left turns the power off to it. So you have a kill and switch yes, sir. attached to your charging that, station. That kills the power. I I left some batteries in a black and decker charger one time. Yeah. And it overheated and started a fire. Luckily, I was there running. And I left some in a DeWalt. And when I came back an hour and a half later to get them, I'll grab that battery and I had to pull my hand away. That battery was getting ready to start to melt. Wow. And I wanted to make sure that never happened again. 
So for about 15 years now, I've just been making sure I plug, I unplug those if they were in a situation. Mm -hmm. But if they were going to get put in a permanent spot, I put them where I could kill the power to them. And uh, what what is the cover for? This is a grinder. Ah, okay. So which you don't. I don't want any dust, particular dust. I, I don't want metal sparks and yeah, dust yeah, yeah, yeah. getting to the contacts. So that keeps it clean. I had to do some work on the pier, and it had some massive bolts on it, and you can't go borrow a two-inch wrench. So I went to go buy a two-inch wrench so I could fix the bolts on the pier, and it was cheaper to buy the whole set. So I did. You're and I, actually, you're kind of like me. Yeah. If you if you if you need to borrow a tool for something, something you're gonna you're need. eager to 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 just buy it. To buy it, yeah. And so then yeah. you have it. Yeah. <laughs> so so I I bought the set so I could work on the dock, and I've I've used the uh, the four or five here on the left quite often now and then on something. The bigger ones that I bought it for for the dock, I've only used three or four times when I was working on that dock. You know, Milwaukee has a big uh, impact. Uh, driver they do with one in one inch with it's one huge, inch it's yeah huge wow I, I, I wouldn't have much need for that in the shop here i wouldn't think but those old tile those old hand that what those things do up top is they cut tile i've, I've laid ceramic that's tile. a hand rail right or that's is that a, is that serving as a hand rail that you're exact that's it i have to take a picture of you that's so up funny there. because yeah. like you <laughs> yeah that's how that's what it's there for and also you have this that can just... They just slide, yes sir. They just slide. They just slide. You really utilize the space. Oh yeah. They are pretty small, huh? Yeah, you can take one down, just pull the and air. Then, and then you did it like this? Yeah, to hang it. That's also very smart. Mm -mm. If you don't mind buying the dollar connector, it's the best way to mount it. That's cool. Yeah, um, they wear out. Oh. No, it's okay. It's, I've got new pads for them. Some of the, uh, a, lot, a lot of pads wear away on you especially when you abuse them these little guys i don't know do y'all have proxton that is a german brand yeah. i love these tools these little grinding wheels yeah with this thing they are awesome for well, what do you use then uh carving open any drawer you want being a tool guy you'll be amazed Ratchets. what's your favorite tool brand for such tools uh, I couldn't say that I have a, f a favorite tool brand. My grandfather had Craftsman. My father had Craftsman. So I had Craftsman for a while. Is Craftsman With, still available? Because no. Because it was a Sears brand, right? Uh, the name is still available. Uh, Lowe's actually bought. Y do y'all have Lowe's or Home Depot? You no, ever heard no, of no. You never been in a Home Depot? Yes, I have. But okay. we don't have it in Europe. You don't have Or them. at least in Germany. In Germany, okay. Well, a company just like Home Depot, but they're called Lowe's. Yeah. Exactly like Home Depot. Same size, same everything. They bought the Craftsman name. It's still a Chinese. Now it's a Chinese-made tool with the name Craftsman on it. But it's not Craftsman anymore. What, what is your f favorite uh, store for, like, tools and... Um, if you want to know the best tool supplier for something like that in town, it's called Circle Saw. And that's, that's actually going to be our first stop when we're done here. Okay. I'm going to show cool. you. So I'm going to show you circle saw. Is it like in Germany? We have like if you're like a, a carpenter, you normally have like wholesalers or special uh, shops that only sell to. Um, I know what you're talking about. Like for mechanics and for welders and for workers, there are drive around tool companies that come to you. And, and carry the tools on their truck and sell them to you. Like a Snap-on? Snap-on is yeah. one of the bigger ones. Yeah. For woodworkers, I don't know of anybody like that. No. So it's not common like in the U.S., like in Germany, that, the, that you have like wholesale retailers for and not end-to-end -end customers? There are wholesale lumber yards and there is retail lumber yards. You would never want to go buy some oak from Home Depot. Okay. You're going to pay 10 times what it'll cost you at the lumber yard. Sure. And there, yeah, there's lumber yards. Yeah, that's our second stop. It's called Houston Hardwoods. Okay. As soon as we're done here. Okay. <laughs> But do pros go to a, like a Home Depot to get some stuff? Sure. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. where I buy all my sandpaper. Yeah. And some of my nuts and bolts. There are wholesale manufacturers for fasteners. And they use the word fastener because they mean everything from nuts to bolts to molly bolts to nails. You know, you name it. If you go to a Home Depot store, like the guys uh, on the sales floor, are they competent or like? No. No? 
it's any Joe Blow they can get to work. Yeah. With that said, and I'm not knocking Home Depot because I go to Home Depot a lot. They do tend to specialize in their feel. There is usually one person in each store. There's one guy that knows a lot about plumbing. One guy that knows a lot about electrical. The stuff you need to know something about. Uh, there is one guy that knows about tools. The majority of them are learning are just not that informed. Now, Milwaukee and all the other tool reps go to Home Depot and Lowe's and Empire Tools and do demos every day. In Germany, we have two brands that are really into focused for like carpenters, yeah. like this is Festool and Maffel. And are these popular in the US? Festool is very popular. Everybody has Festools. Yeah. It's one of the most expensive tools. You, you don't find somebody working on a budget using Festools unless they got them or acquired them. If they had to go out and buy them, you'd buy something else if money was an, an object. He who dies with the most the tools, tools wins. wins. Okay, that's your motto? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> There's a very well-known wood shop in Colorado, and underneath their sign, it's been there since the 1800s, that's the, what's written on their sign. And I've seen it. He who dies with the most tools wins. So it all derived from this workbench? I couldn't get over there when I first got the place. That, uh -huh. was, that was another suite. I bought the property, but it had a lease on it, uh -huh. so I couldn't get there. This was the first section. I, this, I did build this bench before I started on the wood shop. At that time, there was a table saw on wheels, a band saw on wheels, a planer on wheels, and I'd pull it out in the middle and use it as I could because I didn't have enough space. When I got the space, I was able to move those tools into their permanent location in the wood shop freeing up the space here. This, this bench was built first, but it didn't look like this. It was just two by four frame with the old doors on top of it that were real sturdy. And then under the, underneath here is a quarter inch steel plate. I put the steel plate for two reasons, because stainless steel is very soft. It's easy to clean, it's very sanitary, it's real nice, but it's also a very soft metal. All right, You can dent it very easy. Yep. Much easier than you could steel. So yeah. I put the quarter inch steel underneath so that it had the durability. It was sitting on something tough. And it allows me to stick magnets to the stainless steel. Okay, here we go. These are neat, aren't Those they? are great. Those are great little wrenches. It's like if you don't know that they exist, this you won't miss is, them. But yeah, once, once you find out, yeah. Stick a socket set on there and get to work building a rack. Oh my God. That's a sawzall. That's a that, Milwaukee that's invention, a sawzall. I would have to say it is because I've got a couple sitting in there that are pretty old. Yeah. And they're Milwaukee's. And they're, and they're, they're and pretty they're, popular in the US. And I like these. I love those. Yes, sir. They are so universal. Flush cuts. Oh, yeah. 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 Everything. And the blades. Tile, glass, wood, steel. It doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 That's a sander station? That is, is that a, an that, oscillating that thing? Is, that is an isolating sander, yeah. It's, all, it's also a tilt bed. Delta makes the only one, most of these. Yeah. You have to tilt the table yeah. to tilt the head, not this one. Ah, ah, okay. Yeah, I see. The shaft tilts. Yeah, 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 yeah. So your work surface, your work piece. Stays nice. stays flush and flat. Ah, that's and the, that's the scale the, and degree. That's oh, just, oh, oh. that's all. That's it. You knock the plastic out, yeah. and it'll go all the way to a forty-five. And you're still working on a flat. You ever worked on one of these when you got the table yeah. on an angle? Yeah. yeah. That's kind of annoying if you I, like like working exactly in this way. Yep. That's a massive machine. Yeah. And you hear like when it runs the smoothness. It's very very quiet. Yeah. yeah. Very oh, yeah. quiet. One of one of Delta's better machines, I must say. That's a nice sign. It's not wrong. It's unique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a little spray booth. Where I can where I can do uh, my spray can work because I always find myself touching something up with a spray can or repairing uh, it. And you have a, a vacuum attached to that? Oh, of course I do. Look, it's hooked to a dust collector. Okay. I'm using the same dust collector that collects the dust and the dirt yeah. as my vacuum for my spray booth. 
you would never in a million years want paint fumes or any flammable lacquer fume getting sucked into a desk collector. It could cause a spark and do an explosion. So you'd never want to use a dust collector mm -hmm. to, as, as your air source for a spray booth unless you filter it. If it's a filtered dust collector and it's filtered before it gets into the pipes, into the dust collector, you're perfectly fine. Okay. So it's, it's, it's hooked up to the dust collector. Spare filters? Those are spare filters, yeah. So it's, they, they look dirty, so. I think I have the top one blocked. I made a panel where I could block one off. So if I was spraying something small, I'd get most of the draw from the bottom. And I can, when you shart, you, you get real creative with a lot of things. By taking the foot pedal and mounting it up high, yeah. where you can get to it with your knee, keeps it off of the ground, out of the way. You can walk up to any tool and turn it on and off and keep your hands free doing what you're doing the whole time. I've never got a walk, I'm carrying this object over here. To use it. And that's a Milwaukee. They're yeah. real, they make real good band saws. The Incraft. Uh, oh, they make, they make great little fences and yeah. precision tools, yeah. yeah. These were given to me. I did not buy them. I have found one use for them so far. A butterfly, I made, I'm not a butterfly, a peacock table that I made. So what, what, what is it? Um, what that is, is that's a suction cup. Let's say you're working on a door front and you want to carve it, mm -hmm. or you're polishing out a piece of stone or buffing out something, and you want it to stay perfectly still. You put an object on here and turn it on, and I kid you not, you could flip this machine over and slam it on the ground, it won't come loose. It's a suction cup. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's made for holding an object in place so you can work on it. And you have it on wheels as well. I, I have it on unit. I have it on wheels. They, the, the one compressor with two of the objects sitting on it, you put something up there and it'll just suck it down. For how long do you run your company? <sighs> Since 1979, when I was in 11th grade in high school. I'll show you, come on. Okay. It's so neat, this place. Come on in. There's not much to see up there. That's tons of parts. For, uh, for the jobs, doorknobs, latches. Wow. See, it does get dirty, I'm working in here. You also smell that this is a... Yeah, every, every now and then it smells musty, every now and then. So when these four Delta air filters are running and the fans and that door open, there's a full breeze going through here. You're not working in a closed in dungeon by any means. can't see it in the video, but look real closely at the handles. You think they get used? Or they just hang there? Uh, <laughs> okay. they, they look pretty used. Yeah. yeah. I did a video on that. I'll take yeah. a 16-inch pair of channel lock pliers yeah. and crank down on that, that vice. Yeah. And that's the only vice that'll hold up to it. That and these little cheaper ones. The big ones up there and down here are probably coming up on over 20 years old. And I go to those more than I ever go to these, these high-end wood clamps. They're just so durable. So why do you go with the Bessies if the cheap ones are good? You can't get six and eight and 12 inches of reach okay. on a clamp on, in those smaller ones that you can in these. The, the Betsy line being able to get eight, eight inches of reach and 10 inches and 12 inches of reach. Do you know the, the, the new Bessie ones that have the handle like here? So you have a transmission here And if you don't have like space, if you want to clamp something like in this corner, yeah. you can use it, uh, clamp oh, it from wow. here. They are new. Never seen Pretty it. Pretty smart. Never seen it. Are these expensive in the US because they are from Germany? Huh? Are these they're, nowadays they're made in China. Yeah. All of these came from Germany. Yeah. If, you take, if you take this clamp right here, made in Germany, mm -hmm. lock it on something and grab those channel lock pliers and give it all you got, This cast iron will not break. Okay. If you take the same exact clamp made in China, it'll break. Really? Yes, sir. So you can never have too many clamps. clamps. You can never have too many clamps. That's true. You can never have too many clamps, guys. And they all get used. Have I ever used every clamp at once? No. 
Have I ran out of three foot clamps? Yes. yes. <laughs> Many a times. Had to use a six foot clamp where I didn't need it. I made these for one particular job, thinking I would just take them apart and use the pipe. And then I found another thing I needed them for and another thing, so I kept them. So all the old hand tools that are there? Um, were they started out with, with, with what's over here. I apologize, I'm in the middle of working on something. Some I have marked over here. 30 of them in here are my grandfather's and my dad's, and I just didn't want to throw it away. Okay. And they weren't carpenters, they, I mean, they were novelists, you know. My dad was a klutz, bless his heart. But I still kept his tools. I see a yeah. Milwaukee. Um, vacuum cleaner. That's vacuum a, that's cleaner a, cordless? That's a cordless vacuum cleaner. You yes, like it? I love it. There's three of them in here. Very there's, well built, There's huh? little ones hanging everywhere. Yeah. And they do, they get used constantly. Operating lace. Oh yeah. Produces sawdust like hell. Oh yeah, and dust. And dust, yeah. And dust. And there ain't no dust collector in the world collects it all. Look back here. You've got dust collectors that use bags and you've got dust collectors that use filters. So I'm still on the fence of whether a bag works better or a filter. Because every now and then I'll get frustrated and I'll take the filters off the top of that and put the bags back on it. And then I'll get tired of the bags and I'll put the filters back on it. There's flappers inside of here. Yeah, yeah. And you have to... Now, if it was... If it was sitting down on the ground the way it was made to do, I could reach that, but I can't. But every now and then with these, you have to stop and clean the filters, otherwise your, your suction just drops and drops and drops. But it's all piped through the ceiling and comes down. Even where the pipes come out of the ceiling, I didn't want the raw pipes hanging down there, so all those wood boxes you see coming out of the ceiling are encasing the metal duct. The lighting is pretty decent. Are these all LED They're panels? They're all LED panels. Yep. This like a big chef's cuisine. Yeah. <laughs> so is this your main working area here for woodwork? Uh-huh. Back of the table, that one, the table over there, over there, wherever. I knew I wanted to get air hanging down there. I wanted to get power hanging down there. I wanted to put lights right on the table. And I wanted to be able to reach up above me and hang something or mount something. Whenever I'm doing detailed carving, like what, that, that's what's on my sticker. Is that sign right there? Yeah. And uh, whenever I'm doing real fine carving, I want to hang the tool above me. So I just built a steel rack hanging down with a platform on it. For also all this stuff could be mounted on it. So it's a steel rack. It's two inch steel attached to Unistrut steel that goes up into the roof. The roof is steel joists with concrete on top. And you see this beam right in the center? That's yeah. a, a 12-inch I-beam. On all three sections of the shop, I added a center I-beam. Okay. This one has a winch, which is right behind you. And the one over there has a, built, a permanent built-in winch hooked to it. And I did, I did that just so I could, not that I wanted to winch anything right here, but more so to beef up the roof. Normally, it can be form follows function because it's like a working area and that's a working table. But you take care of so many details and you just yeah. push the envelope yeah. like, like this. You don't need to do that. No, you, 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 don't, need you that. don't need to put crown mold. You damn sure don't need to put rope mold under no. your crown mold. No, so why do you do it? Because that's the way I like it. Because you can. Because I can, yeah. Like even here, like yeah. th this is your, your table saw. Now, now, yeah, this, this. With a big table. This was uh, not meant to go there. That was never meant to go there. That is, all, that is all a wood called Pink Flame. It's a beautiful wood, as you can tell by looking at it. I carved all the sunset. That's orange agula that the sun is made out of, and then the flames are Pink Flame. Cut and book matched all the pieces, put it together planed it down the quarter inch, veneered it to uh, Baltic birch, mm -hmm. which is that birch there. The wood's only a quarter inch thick. I came back one day and the sucker warped. It had a two inch warp in it. Shit. Uh, that's what I said. Shit, what happened? Baltic birch does not warp. That's what it's made for. It's a cabinet, high quality cabinet grade plywood. Baltic birch. It warped. 
that's why these thousand cuts are in here. To get the warp out of it, I had to put it on the table saw and get all those cuts out of it. It's gonna hit you, it's a big drawer. Yeah. It was a headboard for a bed, is what it was gonna be. So after it warped, you, you decided to take it as a drawer? I wasn't gonna front. throw it away, so I used it for a drawer front. This was the, this was the front, and that piece up there, its brother was the back. Crosscut sled. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't keep the door with that crosscut sled, so that if you put this attachment on here, you had to have a leg coming down right here. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they did that. Somebody ought to kick their engineer in the butt. They weren't thinking. I just took their leg and used it as an outrigger mm -hmm. un underneath the rail, so I didn't have that leg coming down. And I did the same thing in the back. I made my own outrigger for it. And all this rack is is a two by four frame just sitting on the ground. To get to this, the table saw to clean it, it just slides right out of the way. You have eight, the Bosch miter saws? Yes, sir, I do. But I need to cut a thousand pieces at 30 degrees. And I, that little twitch is 30 in just a niche. And I've got that miter block set up, the stop block, the 30 degree angle, repetitive cut, repetitive cut, repetitive cut, repetitive cut. And I now I've got to make a square cut. I'll be damned if I'm going to change my setting because I need to make some square cuts. So that's now. the reason why you have two. That's the reason there's two miter blocks. So you can do a project where there's repetitive cuts and still have a saw that you can change. Yeah. So, so are, you, are, you, are you happy with the precision and the, and the mechanics here? The only issue I've had with these um, saws is the fence. And if you look real closely at this fence and feel right there, it's not even. And it won't line back up. Why is that? I do not know Why yet. Why is that? That's bad. I do not know yet. Is it with both? No, just that one. Am I happy with them? I love them. Yeah. I've been meaning to get rid of these and make my own zero clearance. Yeah. But I just haven't had time. But that's on, on the to-do list. But other than that, I've been very happy. But this with is them. neat. That's, yeah, well, that's, that's resin. That's just Doug. <laughs> Getting that's rid Doug. of their plastic knob, that's yeah, all. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The only other thing I wasn't happy with them since you asked, if you look at the dust collection. You have some bends and curves and angles, which is not good for a dust collection. No, it's because not. Because it, 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 it blocks. It's not. And I, and I modified the flap yeah. and took the flap down a little farther. And I took two inch all the way, as close as I could get it. And uh, I've, I've got them hooked up. And do they catch all the dust? No, no, none do. But you know what they do catch? That little stuff that floats in the air that you breathe in. That's what I'm worried about. Am I worried about having to clean up? No, I'm worried about breathing in. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. I was, I was thinking maybe, maybe it's a way that you have like this dust collection here, but then, like in a big kitchen, you have like a, a, a suction here. Yeah. Like oh, a, so a hood, like a hood. Like a hood that, would, that, that, that covers the area. To, hey, to take a commercial restaurant hood yeah. and put underneath a yeah. cutting surface yeah. would be awesome. Yeah, because then this, this gets like 70% of the dust, dust and the rest, because it floats around, but yeah. it can't, can't go away yeah. because it will stay in that, in in that, that area, in that hood. What do you call this, that, that arm with it? Uh, the, 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 the kinematic. Yeah, whatever they call it, yeah, robotic, yeah. kinematic. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was leery with it at first. Too many moving parts. But it works. It works great. It's reliable. It, it works great. Yeah, yeah. It works great. I got no problems with it at all. That fence not lining up has been my only issue. And so these are wood samples? All different woods. A small veneer piece, yeah. That blood wood right there. No, that's purple heart. Just another way of trimming out a corner. And again, this is what happens when you sharp. That is <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. It's, it, it's in all of them. And it doesn't matter how much weight, and I don't have to tell you that's heavy. You know. No. Unfassbar. When you, when you shark, you get creative. The Texas Star. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to the details, huh? The details, yep. That is so this This amazing. is, this is um, walnut and yellow heart laid into a piece of oak. This is more pink flame. 
This place is full of passion. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's, I can't, I can't get it yeah. even. Like yeah. staying here for like hours yeah. and I still don't get it. If you're doing a pattern like that on a miter box, that's, <laughs> that's made with purple heart, yellow heart, and walnut. And the question is, are the boxes right side up or upside down? Yeah. Which way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll play with your eyes, believe me. It's interesting that it's like an optical illusion, but yeah. look, the handle yeah. dives right in. Thank you. There's my wood samples. How many wood samples are those? Uh, there's 152 there. From what I'm told, there's about 60,000 species on this planet. And there's a little over 1,500 to 2,000 that you can actually get a usable product out of. And I added one more today. It's called German oak. <laughs> yeah. I just haven't put it up there yet. <laughs> it's German oak from my grandfather. From your grandfather. Yeah. And uh, everybody that gives me a piece, this one is a very interesting piece of wood. I don't just put it up there. You got to pay attention to details. I put what it's called, which is Bonin or Bonin. Mr. John LaFrent gave it to me. This tree got struck down by lightning on July 4th in 2019 mm -hmm. on the Edison and Ford Estates. Back in the early 1900s, Thomas Edison and Henry Ford, and I'm sure you know who those two people yeah, yeah. are, sure. were good friends, believe it or not. They bought up a lot of land in Florida and South Florida and started importing trees from all over the world. They had a fascination with different woods. And they, they put those states there, to those trees there, and they planted them. And they have thousands of different type of trees planted there. And John saw my first video with my wood sample list and sent me several different species. And then a few other people have sent some since. But today, I got German oak from your grandfather. It's always fascinating how the fire comes out of the wood when you clear coat it clear coat it or uh, oil it or oil it oh yeah yeah, yeah the clear, i the, think this is the magic moment when, well, you, that's when you have right. when you oil the wood and it just makes it pop yeah, yeah yeah just makes it pop several of these are what's called spalted pieces you know what that is no what spalting is when a piece of wood when a tree dies a fungus starts to grow mm -hmm. inside the dead tree, mm. be it standing or laying down. It's mm. dead, it's dead. Mm. If you catch it at the right time, mm -hmm. where it's still stable wood, but it's dead, you'll get it with that fungus in it. Mm -hmm. That fungus is what's created those black lines, creating that pattern that you see. What's your favorite wood? I'd have to say red oak and paduke and walnut. They're all, especially Paduke and Walnut, they're beautiful woods, they got a lot of color to them, and they're very easy to work with. Look at that peacock video that I did when you get home and you're killing time. Mm -hmm. I, car I carved a, 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 a peacock mm -hmm. out of Walnut, mm -hmm. and it came out very nice, real nice. Any other average guy has one scroll Yeah. Doug has three, three, yeah. three well, of them. I actually have four, but. There's only three here. <laughs> there's one There's one in the job site saw. You do need a scroll saw there at time. All, all so the, that's a drill that you converted to a polishing that's, machine? That's a drill that I turned into a sander and a polishing Polisher. machine. That's just a piece of all thread mounted at the bottom and the top and then those uh, mop wheels mounted on it. And I use it a lot. And I stuck a wire wheel on the bottom of it, which I use for it, and the buffing wheels. This is uh, that's that's resin in Mali burr. That wood that wood is called Mali burr. This is like you 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 know the the Mercedes S class like from the seventies. They started with uh, veneer. Yeah. Like with walnut. That's that's they were using Mali. They were using burrs. Yeah. 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 Mali Mali and walnut and olive. They used a lot of olive. If you want a very pretty, knotty wood like that, but light, it's olive. Olive olive burrs are awesome. But on your video, you and the little young guy weren't quite sure what you did with these. Druckkammern? In two seconds. Loose. Für, ja, weiß ich auch nicht. <laughs> this thing's been sitting under 70 pounds of pressure. So. <laughs> little noisy, okay? Actually, it's in all four of them. A 
like any sealed chamber, you never want to open just one side or one corner. It'll mess up the seal. So you had a piece of wood on the lathe. I added resin into the piece of wood, like one of these, and then you put it into the pressure pot. And the pressure pot makes it that the resin... It collapses all the air bubbles that are in the resin mm -hmm. to the point where they're invisible, they're gone. Mm -hmm. Some people will tell you it takes the air bubbles, it pushes the air bubbles out of the resin. It really doesn't. It makes them all go away. And, and when you pull your resin out, it's, it's as clear as glass. Set that on the Tim's. It looks like a birthday cake. It's a plate. So who did this? Do what? Who did this? Me. You're an artist, Duck. I do everything. I put it on the lathe and I turned the groove about an inch deep into there. Put some blue resin in first, mm -hmm. then put these little store-bought decoration pieces in with the glitter and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to mount it back on the lathe mm -hmm. with that chuck that's on there right now. Yeah. And then turn it again. And I'm going to take all this excess wood off because that resin's about a half inch thick. Mm -hmm. Hollow this out. So all you're going to see is the, re the, the resin rim on the top. And it's going to be a candy bowl. And that's going to be four of them. There's one in each pressure pot at the moment. How much is one of those? <sighs> These are probably like 250, 300 US. That big one over there, the one on the far end, like $1,000. Okay. Oh, by the way, give me that black mark slot before I forget. You see it? Sign my door. Excuse my terrible handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> you have anybody over there that turns? Uh, yeah. Do you? Yeah. We'll pick two out she likes and take them home with you. And show me what they finish when they're done. It's what, molly, what, what, burr, and resin. What would you turn? Like what shape? Like for like a candle holder? That could be a candle holder, wide on the bottom. Go narrow and go top where the wood's showing on the top and bottom. Uh -huh. That could be a tap for your favorite beer cooler. That could be a handle for a tool. That could be a wine glass. Could be anything your imagination could think of turning around. And there's some really pretty color ones. I love the one behind the one you just took. If you look at the one behind it. This one? Yeah, look at, look at that one up at the light. Yeah. Oh. Isn't that nice? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pick, pick two so you can take them home. Das ist schon abgefahren, ne? You can't do that without a pressure pot. You could sit there and pour the resin and stir it until it's getting jelly to where you can't stir it anymore. And the best you could hope for is to leave some swirls in it. To get the two different colors of resin, like this looks like I used blue, green and gold, to mix like that, it's got to go into a pressure pot. Wow. Why does it mix like that when it's under 60, 80 pounds of pressure? I have no idea. I just know it works. This is a touch lamp. So, ich habe euch auf Insta gefragt, ob ihr noch ein paar Fragen an den Duck habt. Äh, und da gab es einiges. Also, mal gucken, ob wir alles schaffen. Äh, aber ich fange einfach mal an. Ne? Äh, wie lange hat Duck dafür gebraucht und wird er jemals fertig? So, how long did it take you to build all this and will you ever be finished? I'm still working on it. I've been working on it for about 30 years. 30. 30, three, yeah, three, about zero. three zero, three, 30 years, yeah. No, I'll never be finished. I actually was thinking about taking over another warehouse. No. Yeah, I want to get one of those giant, uh, It's a multi-tool thing. It's a ma it's a table saw that that does. It's got a great big sled on it, mm -hmm. and and a much and a much bigger bandsaw than what I've got that I can set a log rack on, because I've I've got the capability to get some small logs, and you can't do that very safely on a bandsaw that will wobble around. You need one that's rock solid. So you mean another warehouse? 
next to this or just move it? Or? No, 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 no. There's a row of warehouses here and okay. each, this one is uh, 4,000 square feet. The second one, the two wood shops are in are 2,000 square feet. Then there's another 2,000 and that a drywall company is renting and there's another 2,000 that an air conditioning company is renting mm -hmm. and so on. There are 10 units inside this concrete building. Mm -hmm. I just took two of them here. Mm -hmm. I could only get this first one when I bought the property. Okay, so it's, your, words, it's just, your property? It's my, I own the building, I own the land, I own the property. I could expand throughout the whole 100,000 square foot of the building, but that's no reason for that. Yeah. Okay. Wann hat er bemerkt, dass es ein bisschen doll ist, was er da stehen hat? Wie kann man das übersetzen? When did you realize that you might be a little over the, the top with your workshop. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm over the top. It is a curse, trust me. I, it's upsetting me that this door is not closed right now. It's a curse, guys. You don't want to go there, trust me. I can't just build a table. It has to be elaborated on. Why do it with just one piece of wood when you can get two woods with different color? That's why, because you can, because that's the way I like it. This, you know, what do you do if your drawer's not deep enough to put an eight inch pencil in it? You put it in sideways on PVC. That's a piece of art in itself. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, really. Yeah. Um, and like all the attention to details. Just everything where you need it you know if you're working with a pencil here you don't want to run across the room for a pencil sharpener so the sharpeners there's the air the power below and above just i am this. also the the type of guy that like has if i have something like a tool i need on several spots i buy three of them you buy three of them yeah it saves so much time it does it saves so much time they're where you need them when you need them yeah You don't have to go chasing down for them. Now, yeah, I've, I've been on the other end of that. So it doesn't have to be this big. You don't have to make it look elaborate. Was baut der Duck hauptsächlich in seiner Werkstatt? Uh, what are you mainly doing in your workshop, building? Uh, I love wood turning. Probably my favorite passion is wood turning and art sculptures. Like that little dinosaur right there behind you. Or okay. those Christmas bowls or lamps. And like uh, the combination with resin? Resin and wood mixtures, yeah. When did you start like working with with uh, resin? Hadn't been that long, three or four years. I think it's it's becoming a, a, a trend on YouTube. Do you you do you think it will stay like this popular, or maybe it's a trend that that fades out? I don't know if it's a trend so much. There's uh, just as many videos about carving wood as there is wood and resin. There's just as many videos about building a cabinet or a bench or a shelf as there is about resin. I think as long as people have a mind and, and thrive knowledge and want to learn and want to find out what they don't know, I think it'll all stay around, yeah. Like, it, like everything, it should just improve. Nächste Frage, wie viel Zeit verbringt der Duck ungefähr in seiner Werkstatt? So how much time do you spend on average in your workshop? Not enough. Not enough by any means. I still stay very, very busy with work. It, it's going on constantly. So on average, eight, 10 hours a week. Eight, 10 hours a week. Yeah, not enough. How many letters you have? A lot more than you see in this video. There's uh, in this shop, there's probably what, maybe a dozen, two dozen in this shop, out on the job and in all the guys' trucks, probably a little over two, 300. 300? Ja. Yeah. 300 Leitern. Ja. Yeah. Yeah. Haben es besser als brauchen. Ja, yeah, I, I should fit. I get asked that question a lot too. Yeah? Why so many ladders? You, you got to understand, guys, everything is not just for me and the use in this shop. The wood shop is my personal shop. Those tools get used on construction jobs by other people. They're just stored here. There's a lot more ladders and scaffolding and trash buggies than what you see on the video. There's just no reason to show you a container full of ladders and scaffolding while it's being stored or whether it's on a job site.
So you have your own warehouse, your dedicated warehouse for the for the rest of the containers. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Was hat der Spaß gekostet? So what was the the total cost of this workshop? Any idea? The property cost a little under three million. That I know, because I paid a mortgage on it for a long time. I know exactly what it cost. I spent over 30 years. That saw that started out there isn't the one that was originally there. That drill press right behind me isn't the drill press that was originally there. These benches were built over the course of a year as I could afford to. I didn't keep a cost. Anything that you're still missing? No. <laughs> no. Let inspiration no. come. No, no, not really, not that I can think of. Not until I see it anyway. Um, a lot of people ask why I don't have a CNC machine. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm just not that good with computers. That's what a CNC machine is to me, is telling a computer what to do and then it does the work. And I find absolutely no joy in that. With that said, they're great. They're great for production work and metal work. And if you've got to bang stuff out for selling, or repetitive cuts, they're wonderful. They're just not for me. That's all. Another one asks any golden screws in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are. Yeah. Um, yes, but they're not screws, they're rivets. What are your top three tools? A table saw, a drill, and a piece of sandpaper. <laughs> That's interesting, piece of sandpaper, why yeah. is that? I use it on every project, whether it's coming off a lathe, off a table saw, off the router, or just being screwed together, sandpaper. I love sandpaper. It is amazing when you, when you really look at it and you study sandpaper. What I, I think sandpaper is, has some magic to it, because like when you build a piece of wood furniture, I like to, to sand down like to grit, like a thousand grit, that it's so smooth. Yeah. That this is magic to me. Yeah, well, you ought to see it when you're working on a lathe. Because the minute you take that tool off of there, it's rough. Yeah. The only way to get it smooth is with sandpaper. And you start, and that's when the magic starts coming out in the turning. And that's when the resin starts to show its true, true colors as you sand it and you bring it smoother and smoother into its finished product. And everything comes to its finish with its sanding and its finishing. That's why sandpaper that goes along with what you're missing. Is there anything that you don't have in your workshop that you think of for the future? Um, a larger table saw. Uh, not, not, not so much a larger table saw. A 10 inch blade is a 10 inch blade. But a, uh, a rip table saw. I rip a lot of four by eight sheets of plywood for stuff that I build here. And uh, it's kind of hard to do with that small of a, a slide on a table saw. Whereas there's a, uh, there's a big table saw that will literally just pick up the whole sheet of plywood and cut it right through. What would you prefer, Dewalt or Milwaukee? Huh, that is honestly a loaded question, guys. If it's a portable planer or a miter box, a Dewalt. Yeah, because if, you can't get them from Milwaukee. You can get a table yeah. saw and yeah. a planer from Milwaukee, yeah. Uh, I've used a DeWalt for years. I was telling you about that one that I gave away to the friend that had the fire. Mm -hmm. And that little portable mil uh, De DeWalt planer. That thing has been through hell and back. And it works great. So um, they're both good. They're Milwaukee makes great cordless tools. Uh, they've made some of the best old uh, sawzalls and bell uh, uh, what do you call it? Handheld band saws. Milwaukee's hands down the best. Miter box and small job site table saws, DeWalt. What is your opinion on cheap tools? <sighs> cheap tools have three things. All right, you can buy a very, very cheap tool and you'll save money, that's true. But I guarantee you, you're going to be buying it again. But more so, depending on the particular tool, your safety using that tool is a lot more important than whether you spent $5 on it or $15 on it. You should buy the better tool when it comes to is it a safety issue. Don't ever buy a dirt cheap power tool that you have to stick your hand near a moving object. Buy something worth having. Do you uh, watch any German YouTubers or channels 
DIY channels, woodwork channels? I do, but I, you asked me that when I couldn't put a name to them. I watch you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I love all of the folks that comment from Germany. That is just awesome. And I, I think I know every one of them personally, and I really do try to. It, I, know, I know I go a bit overboard when I answer a comment. A lot of people would just say thank you and let it go at that. And I don't feel right doing that at all. Do you have a favorite German tool brand? Uh, Betsy, the clamps. The Betsy those, clamps? Those clamps. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, I, that I know of, that I've had. You told me those were German, and I would have never known yeah. until you told me. So I'd be lying. But to say I know it came from Germany, those. He brought me some tools, <laughs> some very nice pliers and wrenches, and I can't pronounce those names yet, guys. They're new to me, okay? But I'll show them to you in the videos, I promise. Ich habe ihm nämlich ein Knipex Sang Set mitgebracht und äh, diese Vera automatischen Schlüssel. Und was noch? Ah ja, und ein Pika Dry. And you got a Pika Dry uh, marker. A Pika Dry marker, yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious. I know I got the long... marker. I couldn't pronounce that name yet, but I will. <laughs> Keep us updated on your experience later. Absolutely. What is the reaction of people that don't know you and then realize or see that workshop here? How do they perceive that? How do you, how, how do they react? Uh, you get everything you can think of, just as you probably well know. From congratulations, I love it. I'm going to have something like that one day. I'd want to have it to... Um, I won't go into all the negative comments. That's pointless. Yeah. You know, you can imagine. Yeah. 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 But it's, uh, it's well received. Have you ever heard of any comparable workshop? Well, I, yes and no. Um, in size, absolutely. There's people got workshops twice the size of mine and three times. In amount of tools, people got me beat hands down. Uh, there's a gentleman who I watch called John the Builder. Uh, he, John used to be a football player. He has a beautiful shop. Beautiful, massive 20,000 square foot metal building. More tools and lumber than I'll ever have. If you're talking about with blood, wood, and walnut on laid on top of oak, I've only seen a few in, you know. Es ist wirklich so, man sitzt jetzt hier <coughs> und wir sind jetzt schon ein paar Stunden hier. Aber zwischendurch guckt man sich immer mal wieder um und muss äh, grinsen. Oh, what is your wife saying about your passion, your workshop? Uh, she likes the stuff I make with resin. She, she wants to claim a few things, which is good. I have it, obviously, so she don't complain too much. But uh, I, make time, I make the needed time for my wife. We're happy. Cool. Yes, yeah. uh, I love her. Can you name like um, a time frame that you build the cabinets? For one cabinet, how long do you work on such a project? Uh, till it's finished, but... Uh, That's a good answer. Yeah, well, it's true too. Uh, I guess it would depend on the size of the cabinet and the project. Uh, that little spray booth took three days. Uh, it could be done in three hours if you spent three hours just going straight at it. But I have to be able to walk away from something and come back to it when I get more time, sure. when the business doesn't call. So it's hard to say exactly how long it takes. What was your favorite project that you ever built? My grandmother's house. Your grandmother's house? Yeah. So in a, a whole house? The whole house, yeah. What was so passionate about it? It was my what? grandmother's and it had a lot of nice pretty cabinets in Crown Mall. <laughs> <laughs> so the cabinets uh, yeah. probably surpassed the, ca the, the cabinets here? Yeah, oh. I built some really nice cabinets yeah. in my day, yeah. It's nice to build something where you can take pride in what you're doing and see the finished product. And uh, uh, stairwells, you can really go to town on stairwells. Do you still feel a challenge to build a cabinet? I mean like a basic cabinet that where the angles are right and that works fine and everything is good, is that still a challenge or is it just like, okay? Uh, it's, nothing's ever like, okay. Every, everything has its issues. You, you can be the best carpenter in the world and the tool's off and you're messed up. But uh, 
it's uh, it's no it's not fun to build a plain old box anymore you know whether you're putting a chamfered corner on it or a decorative corner or whatever so no it's not challenging it's it's not mundane but it's not challenging okay yeah do you also do welding yes over there Yeah, that's, that's a welder, right? That's there. a welder. That's a welder, yeah. And yeah, it's yeah, so a sand, sand blasting uh, box. Uh, th that's that's a blast, uh, not sand blasting. It's what's called a bead blasting cabinet. You can take a rusty object and put in there and clean the rust off. Okay. Yeah, Me uh, mechanic shop cleaning things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Funny. Okay. Can you say something in German? Do you know any German words? Don't no no that's not it. Haben ist besser als brauchen wir jetzt gar yeah. nicht. Can you, can you say haben ist besser haben ist besser als brauchen? Oh God, give me something easier than that. Like haben, haben, haben ist ist besser besser als haben ist besser als brauchen brauchen. Ja, yeah. haben ist besser als brauchen. Also has <laughs> what's what's it saying? Yeah, that's uh, haben ist besser als brauchen. Is that on the T-shirt I gave to you? Oh, that's, well, well, uh, it's I'll... better to have than to need. Oh, okay, okay. Last question. Um, we ask you about your top three tools. Yeah. What are your worst three tools that you ever had? Oh gosh, uh, I uh, I had a Black and Decker router that literally came apart at about 1,000 RPMs in my hand. Wow. It, it just, it just, the blade, oh my God, that was a nightmare. Um, I shot my brother with a nail gun. I didn't like that nail gun too much. But I don't think that's what kind of question they're asking. Uh, I had a Grizzly Sander once, and I, I was gonna say this, but I think Grizzly has gotten a lot better over the years. They were known for being a knockoff cheap Chinese tool, but nowadays they've gotten better. But I had a grizzly table saw and I didn't buy it. It was given to me or it was left somewhere. I acquired it, for lack of a better words. And I swear I almost lost my hand on that table saw. It just was not quality at Why all. Why was that? Uh, the way it was wobbling. And, and moving on me, it looked like it was sturdy and it went to the left while it was still running. Very, very bad design. Okay. Cast metal top and not enough ground coverage on the feet. Just a horrible design for a table saw. Jetzt seid ihr mal gefragt, was hat euch denn am meisten beeindruckt hier bei Duck in der Werkstatt? Äh, Schreibt es mir mal unter das Video. Und ähm, ich habe dem Duck ja ein schönes Zangenset äh, mitgebracht und das verlose ich auch wieder. Äh, Link unten in der Beschreibung. Ich werde jetzt mit dem Duck noch mal ein bisschen hier durch die Gegend fahren und äh, wir schauen uns noch mal einen Baumarkt an oder auch noch mal einen Holzhändler. Ne? In diesem Sinne, macht's gut und bis dann. He's the tall one. Oh. <lacht> I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just said... Was guckst du? Hm. Hm? Was? Ne, so einen Quatsch würde ich nicht sagen. Ne? Also gar nicht? Ne. Einfach in Englisch weitermachen? Mhm. Okay. So just continue in English.